we did have where kind of every player put three songs in, but you were going from a bit of Martin Garrix to ABBA. So <laughs> um, yeah, we, we kind of, we cut that out because it was, it was a bit of a vibe killer sometime. Well, on, uh, so tell me about your GAA journey. Yeah, so I um, from I play with a club in Wexford called Shell Millers. Um, have been with them as as long as I can remember since I was a toddler. So we're we're a dual club. So we we play senior codes in Bolton. So um, yeah, we we won we've won a few a few titles over the last few years in hurling and football. So uh, yeah, it's it's been a really good few years for the for the club. We were successful in underages as well and things like that. So. We've really got a good uh, a good club going um, at the moment. A lot of people putting a lot of work into it and things like that. So, uh, yeah, it's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant people down there. And uh, how did you start getting involved with the GAA, whether that be football or hurling? I was down there since a, since a toddler. We had a really, a really good group of, of, of lads my age kind of came up. So all, obviously all still very good friends and, and a right crop of us have come through to our, to our senior at the moment. So. Yeah, it's been. We've, we've, as I said, we've we've had a, a successful few years on the and then up to senior. So, um, hopefully, it, it can continue. Yeah. When you started playing as a, a toddler, did you ever think you'd be putting on the Wexford jersey? Uh, whatever. Eighteen years later. Uh, to be honest, I, I I I didn't think so. Uh, I didn't really think about it much. I suppose I was just kind of playing with the club and never thought much more of it. Didn't I actually? I think I played one one tournament underage maybe for Wexford, but my my first proper game with Wexford was was a senior match um, a debut against Dublin uh, in Crow Park, and of all the games uh, come into Mark Jack McCaffrey, so thrown into the deep end straight away on him. But no, do you know something? I've been there for for ten years. This is my tenth season now, and and loving every minute of it. You know, my, my father and my grandfather would have probably would have played at Wexford, so it was kind of always a joke, maybe within in the family kind of, of coming up, you know. And my father would always be telling me that he was a better footballer than me or whatever. But yeah, I I, I didn't think so, but then just just got a phone call um at, at eighteen or nineteen and and it, it it's been that's just it's probably been most of my life now, you know, for the last for the last ten years. So yeah, loving it. That's a great successful journey that or a success story I should say that uh, you didn't play for Wexford at all underage and then straight in as you said in Crow Park against the Dubs. Um, is there many other lads on the panel that have a similar route like that? Um, I don't, not really like there's, there's a few kind of lads who've been playing there they've come up through the underage ranks now the last few years they've been on their, their minor teams and they've come through and there's there's really a good crop of, of young lads that are coming through um, there's a few of me blooded in this year. The night before a big game, have you got anything in particular, any rituals that you'd, you'd do? Keep it simple. Uh, yeah, I can all keep it simple. I think, to be honest, just relaxing. Uh, relaxing is the big one, getting plenty of stretching, uh, carb loading, um, getting all that carbs into it probably on, on the day before. But no, I, I wouldn't like to do not anything out of the, the ordinary, just, just relax. If there's sport on, on the day before, sit off, kind of stretch. Keep my mind busy, probably, you know, a uh, few lads be at home, just keep chatting to them or whatever. Um, something small, maybe dog for a walk, but nothing, nothing, nothing too strenuous. Is there any uh, hidden gems that I should look out for in Wexford? Uh, probably not too much of a hidden gem, but it's definitely it's one of the nicest beaches around Ireland and Kirklow Beach. I um, don't know if you've ever heard of it, but real, it's, it's, it is, it's lovely. I suppose we, we do get a, we're a small kind of, Kirklow would be a small, it'd be quite enough during obviously the, the winter, but once the summer kind of hits, you know, you have a lot of people coming down from all over the place. There's a great buzz down there. The Raven Forest is lovely, the beach is lovely. And apart from that, I suppose we have, uh, we've one of the, the, the Hook Lighthouse is one of the, the oldest functional uh, lighthouses in, I think Europe, I believe it is. So that's probably one of a, a very big touristy spot down our way too. Oh, and who'd be the toughest marker trainer now? Yeah, again, we we have a few. Um, I'd say Kevin O'Grady uh, would probably be one of the the toughest markers. He's absolutely light and fast, so he's. Uh, I don't like. Yeah, 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 no, but I, I it's again it's similar to you. I, I kind of I don't find myself marking him too often, but. Uh, when you do, he he will he'll keep you running. Um, he's not afraid to go by you. So, uh, no, very good player. Um, I suppose Niall Hughes would be another man. If I'm ever training midfield, he's he's a, a big aerial threat. So he, he's he's tough to get the the better of sometimes in an aerial battle. 
on the way to a match now, whether in a bus or that, would be anyone in charge of the music or what's the, the music situation? We have a designated DJ this year. Um, over the previous years, we kind of we had lads coming in and out, but maybe they've been they've been kicked off duty. But uh, Owen Porter, um, he actually he didn't feature with, feature with us during the league or um, on the, due to injury, but he is the the designated DJ. But no, he's very good. He's even got the songs blended on Spotify. I don't even know how he does it, but uh, no, he's very much. His his boom boom his boom boom songs to get you going and get you pumped in the gym or on the bus whatever we're doing we did have we did have where kind of every player put three songs in but you were going from a bit of Martin Garrix to Abba so um yeah we, we kind of we cut that out because it was it was a bit of a vibe killer sometimes but no Porter Porter's the main man obviously Porter takes over dressing room and bus then dressing room and bus he has got he has got his little small speaker for his portable one to bring around for for the uh for the bus but then he has a he's a big boom box for the gym that he goes around with like a you no know, suitcase of a yoke but i i was gone at there the odd time but i'm more so into my into my noughties instead of my the his choice of songs